C and M, linking us together. C and M, for your international media. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the C and M Media interviews. Everyone watching in the UK, in Europe, around the world, we want to welcome you to our interview today. I'm Carol Crawford. I'm in Seattle, Washington. And I am Miles Crawford from London, England, and we are super excited about today's interview. Elated and excited in actual fact. Wow, can't wait for this one. Yes, we are excited and elated. Well, she is a multiple award-winning recording artist, and it is our sincere pleasure and joy to welcome Martha Munizzi. Welcome, Martha. Thank you, Carol. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Miles, all the way in London, England. I love technology. We can just be almost in the same room at the same time without having to fly anywhere. This is awesome. I love it. I, love it. I know we've just, you know, we've got closer globally. So this is really good. And it's, it's so great to see you. We're excited to talk to you today. Um, and we'll go straight into it. You know, you recently um, released a single from your first album. And it's your first album in over a decade. Can you just walk us through the past 10 years and what the Lord had you doing during that time? Well, my husband and I traveled for about 15 years on, on the road, traveling and all over the world. I've been to London several times, Seattle a few times. Nice. Uh, and God began to really put a new desire in our hearts to plant something in our, in our hometown. We're in Orlando, Florida, the home of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so <laughs> I know I was, I was born and raised here and, and we just, you know, we just felt like God was saying it's time to kind of take that next step and put some roots down as far as ministry. So yes. we started at um, some worship events here that we would do every, uh, every maybe every other month. And mm -hmm. then we just kept growing, we had Bible studies. We didn't really know what God was saying. I think he was telling us to plant a church from the beginning, but it was very, you know, it's a huge responsibility. So we were like, it can't, God can't be saying start a church. That can't be it. So let's just, let's just start doing something to, to kind of help and, and encourage uh, people that list, love to worship. And then it just became a real strong clarion call that we were to plant a church a little over five years ago. And that's what we've been doing the last 10 years is, is just pouring back into the people that are in our, you know, our neighborhood, our churches, the ministries around us. And now we're pastoring. That is awesome and amazing. And, you know, the past year has been a challenging time for pastors, for churches. Um, what has the impact been for you during the past 2020, the past year, you in terms of church? It's been a discussion in my house for several weeks now, just coming out of this pandemic and, it, you know, looking to the future and feeling like, okay, we're getting back to normal, especially here in Florida. We didn't, you know, we, we did have some restrictions, but we have not been super locked down. So mm. our church reopened back up in May of last year. So we started back up in May. We spent wow. a lot of times, yeah, we, we've been meeting and we've, we've kept it to about 25, 50% capacity. Um, yeah. Now we're opening up even more and we do it as safely as we can we wear masks and all of that but yes. we've not had any we, we haven't had any outbreaks and but we just move forward and just trusted god and people have been displaced people haven't come back to church we have a lot of our of our church family they were like are you gonna come back but you know Aww. people that maybe uh, are immunocompromised or older um just haven't felt but they've stayed connected through uh, uh, through social media which has been great and yes. other as well so we're getting back to it easter's coming and we are planning just like we always do easter we're planning it this year and we're going to go for it wonderful wonderful good to hear good to hear wonderful you know um martha can i just ask you something <laughs> <laughs> you you live in florida right yes so i'm i'm planning to come over to florida in i think it's june is it june carol Yes, the, it is. That event. Where, where was that event again? Uh, Miami, I believe. 
Are you what? So are you Miami, Florida? Is that where you are? We're in Orlando. We're about four hours, three and a half to four hours from Miami. But my twin what? sister pastors a church in Miami mm. called, uh, yeah, Metro Life Church. So if you're, if you're there and you want to, if it's too far to come, oh, wow. you can always go there. <laughs> oh, that, I'm, I'm, the thing is, I'll, I'll let you into a secret. I'm, I've traveled right across the world. Myself and my sister, Carol, uh, spoke about this recently, but I've never, I've traveled the world. I've never been to the US. I've never been to the US. Really? And so we've got, I've never been to the US. Mm -hmm. And we've got an opportunity to come in June. And um, when you mentioned Florida, I thought, oh, I'm going to be going to Florida. Yes, <laughs> we can meet. <laughs> of course, your states are so big. Yes, yes, everything's big. Everything's big. Yes, it would be, it's about a four hour drive. Yeah. Uh, from Orlando to Miami and Miami to Orlando. <laughs> Wonderful. But uh, the, the, the church, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go to your, um, uh, visit your twin sister's uh, yeah. church. And talk, talk about twins. We've got twins in our family, haven't we, Carol? We do. We do. Yes, our yeah. dad is a twin and uh, he has 10 siblings that are twins and triplets. All of them. Yeah, there's one single out of the 11 children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that must be the most <laughs> five, 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 five. Yeah. Oh, I've never I don't think I've ever heard of that many where they're all triplets or twins that's amazing yeah sure. so we, are, we understand who's um who's the oldest or the youngest out of you or your sister I'm the is youngest. Your she is the oldest she's four minutes older and, and my mom didn't know she was having twins. She thought she was having a big giant boy. She thought, <laughs> <laughs> and so, and that was back in the day when we <laughs> wake up with a baby, you know? So she didn't know until she woke up and was shocked that she had twin girls. It was not oh. at all. <laughs> what, a, what a lovely surprise. What a lovely surprise. Yeah. Um, oh, Martha. I, I, okay. One, one, one second, Carol. One second. Okay. Identical or not identical? We look very, very much alike. Um, so we've always said identical, but um, it was hard to. We didn't. It was back in the day where they didn't like know for sure. But we look very much alike. We sound very much alike. So we always say identical twins. Does she sing? Does she sing as well? She does sing. She's a great singer. Great. Wow. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you have a wonderful new single, Glorious 2.0, I'm Gonna Win. And, you know, I love watching your video because when I watch it, it just makes me want to dance. <laughs> I really love it. <laughs> it's a great video um, and it's a wonderful song. And, you know, let's, let's see just some of your video right now. Let's watch a bit of your video and then we'll hear from you after that. Okay. Come on, somebody, give God a shout of praise. I want to see everybody dancing. Come on, let's go crazy in this place. We have authority. Come on, here we go. Say, I am going to win. Yeah, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. God says so. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I am going to win. Because God says so. I am going to win. 
Oh, Martha, it must have been so great riding with your daughters, Danielle and Nicole, and Glorious 2.0. Share, share a bit about Glorious 2.0 and, um, you know, just your process, your writing process, and all those that contributed. It would be great to hear. Well, I love telling the story because it was such an incredible story. This this um, pandemic, you know, I don't know if how you both fell, but 2020 was just the year I was ready to just to get it behind us, right? Let's just move on, pretend it never happened. Let's get back to life. I never, never had it in my mind or in my heart to do a full record live recording in 2020. Right. And so we were getting ready to do something for our anniversary, for our church's anniversary. And, you know, it was one of those things you're like, let's do it when we can really do it right. We can't. So, but my daughters who work alongside us in our ministry, they said, we need to do something to celebrate. Can we take an old song and kind of, you know, rearrange it and, and we can get a producer to help us. I said, yeah, but we don't really have any budget for it. You know, if you want to do it, I was not, usually I'm pretty full of faith and, you know, energy and positivity. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had been, I look embarrassed. But um, I, uh, they, they reached, they had already reached out to David Outing, who is the producer and one of the co-writers of the song. And he's a, a friend of ours that had lived here in Orlando. And he said, I will, I, yeah, sure, I'd love to help you see what we can come up with. And we had one Zoom conversation and went, okay, let's do a writing session. We sat down, wrote mm -hmm. four songs, the first writing session. It just came out so quickly. Yes. And at that writing session, we started talking about doing a live recording. This was in October, the middle of October. And I said, well, when are we going to do it? He said, let's do it before the end of the year. Let's do it in November. I said, we, we've only got four songs. And we had one more writing session. We, we did eight songs and did a live recording in November. So 30 days from the, the original idea that was formed, we were on stage doing a live recording with eight brand new songs. And wow. put on, did it at our church, which is unheard of. My husband was going, we're breaking every rule. But... <laughs> The Holy Spirit was like, like saying, let's do it. And we, we kept thinking, what better um, story to tell that in the middle of a pandemic, yes. he did a record. We, we said, God is going to pull out the victory from the third, the, the fourth quarter right. of this year. And that's what, that's what he did. That's what happened. So the devil didn't take the whole year. We, we, we got it back and did a record and it's such a great feeling. And Glorious was one of the last songs that we wrote, Glorious 2.0. We were, we were talking about it. And I said, you know, I, I remember going through the pandemic. I would just look for things that were familiar because there was so much uncertainty. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, what, what is it that makes me just feel normal? Like before this ever happened. And I would find myself listening to older songs and, mm -hmm. and old, you know, sitcoms and things that were pre pandemic and they brought me comfort. And mm -hmm. so we started talking about what could we do that would help people. And this was the first idea Let's take a song that people are familiar with, that people love, that are a part of their, their you know, time with the Lord or their uh, musical praise and worship journey, and it's familiar, and let's add a new declaration, let's take it to the next level, put some more horns on it, and let's see what happens, and that's how Glorious 2.0, I'm Gonna Win, was born, and we have, we're, we just, singing it and declaring it is so much fun. Love it, love it. I keep saying, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna win. win. I'm gonna win. We're gonna win. I'm gonna win. Yeah. I'm gonna win. Because he said, you know, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna let you into a little secret here. Carol told me off, right? <laughs> because I said it was uh, Glorious 2.0. No. <laughs> it, it she is. said, she said, no, it's 2.0. Two was it 2.0? 2.0? 2.0? 2.0? She says, oh, that's a British thing. That's a British thing. <laughs> it is, it is. You're probably correct. We're saying it more from a, from a, a shortened version. So you're <laughs> <laughs> 2.0? I don't know. <laughs> but when I am, um, I, I love that video. I like the energy. I'm, I'm um, you know, I'm a person that's, that loves live. So when I saw that, I thought, Brilliant, that's fantastic. But I thought, I thought, first of all, that the, the two singers on either side were your daughters. They're, are they your daughters? Or they not? are my daughters. And I'm- They I, are, I, I was I, right. I, you asked me, I forgot to mention it. Those are my daughters. Danielle mm -hmm. is the blonde, Nicole is the brunette. Mm -hmm. And 
Danielle is the oldest and Nicole is our middle daughter. And then we have a son, mm. but they are so, all three of our kids, we're just so proud of them. And they are just so talented. Uh, they're all in ministry. They're all either behind the scenes or in front of the scenes. They do everything. They can, they can run multimedia. I mean, whatever. They can run a kid's ministry. They can lead worship. <laughs> they, can do. they can make it happen. And Danielle and Nicole were the ones who really pushed me to do this. You know, sometimes you need kind of uh, people that, that you know and trust around you to say, mom, you need to do, it's time. Yeah. Let's go yeah. for it. What are we waiting for? <clears throat> exactly. When you do a record, you know, I don't know if people really understand the record's the easy part. Mm -hmm. Making the recording, that's the fun, easy part. It's everything that comes with it that comes after that. And so I already knew the price that you pay to put a record out, but you know, this was the first time in 10 years that I said, okay, I'm ready to do it. I've, I've, I've done, this is my eighth record. Yeah. And so I said, no, it's time. God it, it has put the right people around. We have a great team at our church that we can kind of, you know, hand the reins over to if we need to travel. Yeah. And so it's the timing is perfect. And then working with my daughters, they oh. wrote this record. They brought phenomenal ideas. I just sat back and said, okay, you guys, this is your time to shine. Bring the fresh ideas let's go. And I listen to them and then they listen to me, which is always good. And mm -hmm. we, we made a record. Awesome. No, you, awesome. Could, you could see the energy on stage. And I thought, oh, oh I yeah. wish I was there. I tell you what I did like though. I tell you what I really, really liked. Um, um, whilst I was doing my research, right, there was a, a piece on YouTube where you were going to do a show, I think it was, and they were, you were in a car, you were filmed in the car. I love the way they did it. Very, very good. You're in a car and then you were going over a, a few songs. The song that you used to sing, I think it was Kirk Franklin's song or something. And then uh, they went over a few of your songs before on the way to the gig, on the way to the show. Um, that looked fun to do. It was fun to do. We, you know, we were, we're always trying new things. And, and the, the, I told my girls, I said, if we're going to do stuff like that, we need to be consistent. But we, we just had so much fun. We had somebody in another car behind us that was filming us. And, and it was just something we, we kind of, it was a takeoff of um, James Corden's uh, carpool karaoke. It was kind of yeah. like a version of that. And then we did a uh, kind of a, a Kardashian sp a spoof for Mother's Day last year. You can find that online too with my girls and I, and we oh, have a look. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that. And um, just, to, it was the beginning of the pandemic. So we're thinking, well, everything's online now. So let's figure okay. out what we can do. But can I tell you though, when we opened up again, yes. I thought when pandemic, the pandemic started, I thought, okay, this is going to last for a few weeks. This is going to give us a, a, a break. We'll just take a break. And the opposite is true. When you're online, it's mm -hmm. more work than when you're doing a, just a service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, and then then you open back up and then you've got, you've got to keep your online going. And then right. you've got to, <laughs> it was like, we needed, our team went, got low, got actually kind of uh, got smaller and the workload got larger. So, mm -hmm. but we did it. We're, we're, and we're, we're just getting started on what the other things that we want to do, but you can, you can see some of those fun videos we did on our YouTube channel. Oh, Wonderful. Oh. Definitely, um, definitely have a look. And uh, just one more question, because uh, as you said, it's it's all online now. It's all virtual. It's all media. I mean, going back, going back before this started, how did you find the transition across? Because um, what, one minute, you know, it was one way of doing things. Next minute, there's this whole new arena whereby you can actually do it yourself and promote yourself yourself. Right. Well, this is, the, this is a great point. This is the first record that I've done fully on social media, mm. Instagram and Facebook. Every other record, you know, I had a, a, a either, well, we did we did pretty much everything um, independently and I had a few record label deals, but overall it was just, we didn't have this vehicle before to really push a record. So man, it is so amazing to think that in two seconds I can hit live and I can be talking to my audience and the people that follow me, telling them about all that I'm doing. And I can do that as much as I want for free. You know, that's incredible. Sure. I, that's a God breathed technology yes. for the church to continue to utilize. And then our YouTube channel and all that. So 
it's really been great. And we're just getting really, like I said, we're just getting started with the single. We have a lot of behind the scenes footage that we shot and interviews that we shot. So when the record comes out, hopefully in the next 60 days, 90 days at the longest, you'll get to see a whole lot more of behind the scenes and interviews and other things that we're working on to promote the, the song and to promote the album. Wonderful, wonderful. We look forward to when that comes out. Uh, definitely want to see more footage and hear more from you. And, you know, um, talking about social media, I know that every day you've been at 12 noon, you've been having a Facebook live prayer. Yes. And I just love that. I was on there myself. I didn't get to put my prayer request in. I, I had so many and I said, oh, it'll be too much. <laughs> but I, I definitely, you know, drew some some um, strength from your, your 12 noon prayer. How long is that going to go on for? And um, can people just jump on on your page? Absolutely. I, I do like a, a, a cross page a posting, cross post. So I'm on our on my Martha Minizzi fan page, and then I'm also shared on the Epic Life Church page as well. So you can either, either one of those you can jump on. And I have been going on Instagram as well, but today I wasn't at home. I did it in my car. I wanted to be kind of outside um, and, and I'm gonna be doing more prayer walks. We're gonna do this up leading up until Easter and we're praying for souls. We're praying for uh, breakthrough. We're praying for revival. We're praying for pastors. We're praying for churches. God just put it on my heart, and there are so many intercessors all over the world and, 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 in, our, and in our church that um, they just know how to pray. And I said, I don't, I just feel like we need to just mobilize people that know how to pray and, and let's do it every single day and be consistent and create a habit of prayer. And so we're going to go all the way up until Easter and then um, probably going to do more. So I, 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 lo I love the whole idea of just jumping on in a few minutes. We're praying for people's needs and even teaching about prayer, which is, which is very powerful. That's powerful. And, you know, prayer is an essential discipline that we really should all be doing. Um, that's our communication to God. He hears everything. There's no limit on his ability. And I'm just excited that we are going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, I like know. how you did that. I like how you did it. Boom. I love that. <laughs> Better than that. This is up at home. Oh, I've got another one. I've got another one. Carol, that was excellent. Oh. Uh Come on. Put your hands together.
You are excellent. Oh, the earth is alone. Everything is Everything yours. Is yours. Everything, Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are Perfect excellent. Church sing. Come on, sing. Good one. Well, you know, Martha, independent artists, they look to you as a role model and someone that they aspire to be like. And um, we have an independent artist um, uh, in our weight room waiting to speak to you. Her name is Anya Dixon. Um, and she has always admired your work, looked up to you, and she really wanted to meet you and also wanted to ask you a question. So welcome, Anya Dixon. Hi, Anya. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Um, Like Miss Carol said, my name is Anya Dixon. I'm also an independent gospel recording artist here in South Carolina, so East Coast. Um, (laughs) I was blessed to uh, release two albums. My most recent album is entitled Overcomer. While we're winning, we might as well also be overcomers as well. And uh, That album was actually birthed out of part of my personal experience, being someone with albinism and also legally and visually impaired. Um, You know, I really have to understand that I I overcome daily. You know, a lot of people overcome different issues there. They overcome cancer or heart attacks or different things like that. But I wake up and I overcome daily. And as you know, I like to encourage other people that are going through those same type situations and just let you know that, you know, we're all overcomers through Christ. We all have victory through Christ. We all win as long as we believe and trust in Christ and our Lord Jesus. Um, So as going into that, as an independent artist, for you, and here's my question for you, being an independent artist now, what is your uh, process now like, or even how do you feel your journey is now being an independent artist? I know, I think you were with a major label. I don't know, I think in Columbia or Integrity or something like that. But comparing the process then, and how do you feel now as an independent artist? And is there other advice for other independent artists that you would have? You know, first of all, for you, your story is amazing. What, you know, the life that you live and and how you overcome every day, that to me is a testimony that will impact so many lives. And I say, lead with your story. That's so powerful. Your testimony is how we overcome it. That's just how we overcome. And, you know, for, for us, again, we're getting started on this new journey of using social media to, to, to promote records and to get it out there, which is, which is amazing. And I would say whatever that you do, be consistent. The labels have changed so much. Mm-hmm. They're not even the same. The record business is not even the same as it used to be in 10 years, things can change. And, and so it's that being willing to every day, do something that's helping you get the word out to to people and a lot of a lot of times when we put uh, we write a book or or we do a record or or, or whatever the situation is there's a for some creatives there's a part of us that feel like well if it's supposed to happen it's just going to take off like god will do it and and in all reality we we have I, i love the story of esther because esther found favor with god which is what opened the doors for her but she also found favor with man and she needed mm. both. 
And so what you're doing is you've already gotten favor with God, clearly, because you've been able to have, have grace and, and God's given you this amazing ability to, to do a record. But now you're, you're working on the man side of it, the man part of it, which just takes consistent work. And it's it, it, whatever it is, even if you do something simple, it's doing something every as much as you can every day. And it's the consistency and the commitment and the faithfulness to what God's given you and not backing down and, and getting discouraged because that's what happens. We don't see, you know, we do the work and we don't see the outcome like we think. And so we think we did something wrong or maybe God's not in it, but you've got to push past that, the barrier and say, no matter if it looks like nothing's happening, God, you're doing something. You gave this to me. And, and a lot of creatives don't push past that first barrier because usually when you're talented and gifted, you don't normally have to. If you're a singer, the doors just open for you. If you're a songwriter, sometimes the doors just open. So we don't really like to have to push hard, right? I met a lot of musicians and singers that way. We don't really like to have to sell anything, especially not ourselves. But if you're going to do this, if you're going to be somebody that's going to be an independent artist, gospel artist, there's a part of that. If you can't hire somebody to do that for you, you're going to have to not believe just in yourself, but believe in the gift that God put in you. I, I, I sat down and said, Lord, give me the songs, but he gave me the songs. I'm, I'm pushing Jesus. I'm not pushing me. I'm saying, God, I want it to make your name famous. And so that helps me kind of get over that hump of feeling like I'm selling myself or pushing myself um, out there. And, and I, that's what I found is like a big hurdle. So just whatever it is you do, believe in what God has placed in you. Go for it. Because that's what makes a difference. There's a lot more talented people than me, people that can sing and write way better than me. But a lot of times people just don't want to, I wouldn't say they don't want to do the work. They, they don't understand the work that has to get done mm -hmm. and you have to do it and you have to be consistent. My nephew wrote a book a few years ago and he came to my house. And he said, I don't understand. I wrote a book. God told me to write a book and nothing's happening. I said, well, you haven't done the work for anything to happen. Like get out there and make it happen every day. And that's what makes the difference. And God honors the work of our hands. I mean, I know there's a lot of answers to the question, but that's really what the top of mind for me is just being consistent and believing in what God put in your hands and just every day go for it. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Martha. Um, Anya, it was great seeing you on here. Thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I just feel it's so important for independent artists that are upcoming and emerging to hear from those that are doing what they aspire to do. So thank you so much, Martha. Thank you. Thank you, Anya. It was great to meet her. Thank you. And, you know, the beautiful thing there was, I mean, you, you said it earlier, was, uh, you, you know, work work hard. If you, get an, if you get an idea or you get an opportunity, you do have to push it forward. And with social media, it's free. It <laughs> it's just free. You just be as creative as you want. Absolutely. And that's your way forward. And that's work right. In it. Work in it. <laughs> that's right and it, and and when you build a church it's the same thing and when you have a business it's the same thing but i think sometimes some creatives who are most creatives but especially you know creatives that are uh believers we and this is this is i'm telling you i have talked to more people that are so amazingly anointed but they just didn't understand the natural part of it they didn't understand and it wasn't that they didn't want to work it wasn't that they were lazy they just did not want to push themselves there's a there's a um, a documentary called uh is it 10 feet from from stardom i think it's called 10 feet mm -hmm. it's Ooh. all about I believe it won an oscar but it's all about the most amazing singers who sang background for yeah. every major artist every huge, oh, wow. Beatles, everybody and yeah. 10 feet from 15 feet from stardom is what it's called mm -hmm. and how they okay. never really jumped over into that place of legendary status that they could have and right really related to it wow that's that's interesting there's a lot of great great vocalists that are um supporting and uh yeah maybe hopefully this year would have you know they would have thought about maybe stepping out doing something more on their own and really yeah. you know showing their experience and their their gifts and talents but yeah i'm gonna watch that that's interesting phenomenal <laughs> <laughs> so, um, good. yeah go ahead Mars. No, I was going to say, um, 
that that story of the the backing singer coming forward we we've got uh, uh, a unique example of what happened oh, i'm going to show it actually uh, we the, we've uh, profiled um uh can you see that cd there's a young lady here uh, she's done this uh, song, this album called The Diva Songbook. Michelle John is her name. She appeared on the British version of The Voice. Do you get The Voice in the US? Oh, yeah. So, so she did, yes. Yeah. So she, she did that. She produced this herself uh, from her own oh money. It was fantastic, the story. I mean, we've got it on our website, actually. And um, she was a backing singer. And then she came forward on The Voice to sing in her own right. She reached the final. She worked with Will I Ams. And, um, you know, mm. she, she then went on and produced that album. Just happened to be sitting on the desert. Another yeah. story. But um, I hope you don't mind, Martha, but I like to, uh, I like to play a little game with our guests. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not athletic. <laughs> It's a little playful game. It's just, it's just a, a Q and A game. We, oh, okay. we call it, we call it quick fire. Right? I will just ask you a question, and you'll answer accordingly. Okay. You up for that? I think I am. I think I can Google it. I'll Google it if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Either, either you'll, you'll, you'll get the gist. You'll get the gist. Oh, right? okay. okay. Trust me, you're in very good hands here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <clears throat> Martha Munizic, how many people get that surname wrong? Everybody except <laughs> for um, people in Europe. They usually get it right. Oh, so wow. Pronounces it correctly. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> but mu Munizzi is the right way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect okay. way. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> so, Martha. Um, simple, simple, simple. Just answer accordingly. Uh, sneakers, sneakers, or shoes? Sneakers. I'm wearing them right yeah. now. Wow. Well, you see, I thought I thought you were a sneakers person. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, here we go. Then here we go. Uh, sun lounger in a country cabin or a sun lounger on the beach sun lounger on the beach, <laughs> on the beach. all day every day <laughs> okay here we go uh uh pc i uh, know um yeah yeah pc laptop or apple ipad Apple iPad. <laughs> yes, I am an, a snob for sure. <laughs> <laughs> PCs are I old. Them. PCs are old. Aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, C, CD. CD. Do, can, I'll do this one quickly. Quickly. CD okay. or vinyl. Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. Um. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> let, let me see. Probably vinyl, because if it's vinyl, you're having more of an experience. CD, you just kind of, if your car has CDs anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think vinyl. It's kind of a throwback, a nice little familiar throwback. Mm -hmm. I like okay. it. Lovely. I like it. All right. So classic movies or comedies? Comedies. Okay. <laughs> Cereal or cooked breakfast? Oh, cooked breakfast. Mm -hmm. or may. I like to eat breakfast. That's my thing, cooked breakfast. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thanks Me for too. playing Me with too. us. We, lo we love to do this just to get to know like a little oh. bit more about, <laughs> about people that we're talking to. And so um, uh, can you tell us how can people connect with you? Where can they find you, um, your music? How can they connect with you, Martha? Well, on social media, you can find me at Martha Munizzi, M-U-N-I-Z-Z-I, -I, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We have a YouTube channel. I, it, there's a Martha Munizzi YouTube channel, and there's also an Epic Life where you can hear me preach a little bit. You can see our church yeah. here. 
our girls lead worship and my husband speak. And so all of that is on our YouTube channel. So yeah, we're all over, we're all over social media. Wonderful. Tell us, you know, just share a little bit, what times are your services at Epic Life? And where's your church, you know, actually located where people can come physically when you're fully open? Yes, we are, um, we're open and it, I think now we're at full capacity. Um, all the come back yet but so it's but it's been a phenomenal season for us uh, but we have 9 30 a.m and 11 30 a.m two services and then we are um in a little suburb of orlando it's called winter park florida it's a great little area and um yeah but you can find our information online on our in, on our instagram page and and facebook and all of that and we'd love to invite anybody that's anywhere near the area come and, and come and visit us awesome Awesome. That is so good. And definitely when I'm in the region, I'm going to come to Epic Life and uh, enjoy the service and your preaching. I look forward to hearing you speak. Oh, definitely. love to have you. That'd be amazing. I'd love that. <laughs> great, great. And in a few minutes, we're going to give you a moment just to say some, um, just speak to the people that are watching in the UK, Europe, and around the world, you know, whatever you want to share on your heart, um, you know, we'd love you to just speak to the people, just so they can hear from you directly. I would, are you ready for that now? Because I'm ready to go. <laughs> yes, totally. Do you know, I'm going to look up this scripture because I've been quoting this, this scripture uh, for the last few months now, and it has just been incredible. And and before I share it, I, I just wanted to just really let everybody know that all of us have experienced loss through 2020 and even 2021. I don't believe that there's one person on the planet that has not experienced some type of loss. We really are all in this together, as we've heard in 2020. We've all been through a pandemic. We've all experienced um, the uncertainty and not, not understanding what's going to happen or, or, or when are we coming out of this? We all have that in common. And that's really, at the end of it all, that's the good stuff that God's bringing out of this is that we really can have more compassion and empathy for one another because we've all been through the same trial. We've, we've all been through this, a pandemic throughout the entire world. And so no matter what region of the world that you live in, you know what it's like now to have gone through a pandemic. And I I laughed early on because I said, I'm a, I'm a storyteller. I love to tell all my experiences. So I, there's nobody that I'm going to be able to stop and say, you won't believe what happened in 2020, not for another 15, 20 years, right? So, because we've all been through it and it's been difficult. And even coming out of the pandemic, the top of the year, um, right around the release of this song. So it was the middle of February around my birthday, my mother um, fell. She's almost 80, but she's very strong. She fell and broke her shoulder and her hip and just a freak accident and was in the hospital, had surgery, had to be in rapid recovery, uh, came home about three weeks ago. And through all of that, I said, Lord, here we are just trying to serve you. You know, what, what else can we do? You know, what, what's the purpose of all of this? And as, as I was going through this, I'm in the hospital with my mom and she's just in agony and in pain. I would have, I would, would have wanted to trade places with her in any, at any moment, if I could have. And here I am trying to talk about, I'm, I'm going to win and I'm doing interviews and there's my mother laying in a hospital bed. And I said, you know, God, there's something about this that you are using. You're going to use, I'm not going to ask you why did this happen because I feel bad or I wish it hadn't. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, what's the purpose behind this or what can we learn? And the Lord began to show me through that. And I wanted to share this with all of you watching that even in, in a season where it just seems like hit after hit and attack after attack keep coming, God is using it for good. And I, I began to think about it with my mother. And I thought if this had happened five years from now with the trajectory she was on, she wasn't really exercising. She wasn't thinking about her health as much. If this had happened in five years, she might not have survived. But because it happened early on, now she can realize I'm fragile. I need to exercise. I need to get in better shape. So the, the Lord showed me this is actually going to prolong her life. She's going to have the next 15, 20 years in Jesus name stronger than she would have had this not happened. And that just stuck with me. I said, God, that's what you're doing. And even though the pandemic was difficult, God strengthened us in ways we haven't even recognized it yet. We're actually going to come out stronger. We've been 
propelled forward five years. The church has advanced five years. You don't realize it, but you've actually, God's accelerated us into the future. And it just depends on how we want to look at it. And one of the scriptures that God gave me, because I realized mom is being strengthened every day. She's healing. No matter what you've gone through, God's healing you every day. You might not feel strong, but you are strong. You're getting stronger. And God's word is so powerful because it says this. It's Amos 9, verses 13 through 15. And this is a promise for us. It says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. This is God's decree. It won't be long now. This is God's decree. Get ready because it's we are on the heels of a revival, on a breakthrough. It says things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once and everywhere you look, blessings. And it goes on to say that God is going to make everything right for his people again. And we're going to rebuild. And that is a promise. I have I have memorized this almost. I have <laughs> I have lived this, this, this scripture and I'm standing on it. And I'm believing that no matter what we see, God is accelerating us. So hold on. Maybe you lost a loved one. We lost a loved one through COVID. It was devastating. I understand the loss, but we can't shrink back in fear. We are God's people, sons and daughters, and we're here on mission and God's going to strengthen us and God's going to accelerate us. So it's time for us to step out in faith and trust that we're healing God's rebuilding us and we're going to be stronger coming out of this than we were going in and we're moving further faster and blessings coming quicker than we can even imagine. Hold on to it and watch it happen. I believe that with all of my heart. So I just want to encourage all of you watching with that today. Amen. Amen. Hold on. God is in control. He's bringing us through and we right. are going to win. Thank you Amen. so much for that word. We just needed that today. Thank you. Amen. And you know, listen, all of you that are watching, please show your support. Go to your favorite download site, buy yourself your own copy of Glorious, I'm going to win. And be encouraged. Be encouraged by these words from Martha Manizzi. Um, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We thank you for your time. It's been great. Great. Thank Girl, thank you, you guys are so much fun this was so much fun anytime <laughs> thank you and uh, can Bye. i say can i say i've noticed one thing all of us three are in the same team right we're in the same team we all wear glasses <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like your glasses i yeah. love your glasses because you see mine are, mine are a bit Mine don't see, can you see, can't see that, but I, mine's, mine's, mine are a bit multicolored, like blue and yellow and all sorts of things. Like but yours, them. yours are lovely. I like yours. I have, I have readers in every room in my house because I have to. It's just, it's just that time of life, right? It's that season of your right. life. Absolutely. Yeah. And you touched on, you touched on one thing very quickly. Um, we're, we're all going through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was, I was watching a, a sermon uh, the other day, uh, a gentleman called Pastor Danner, very good um, sermon, and um, he he said one thing that really resonated with me, and that's everybody should deserve a medal, everybody should deserve an award, because everybody in the world is going through this at the same time. We're all experiencing this at the same time. There's no, there's no levels we're all doing this together. So once we all go through it, all of us have had all of our experiences and stuff like that, we all deserve a medal. So what you said there was just impactful. It was perfect, yeah. wonderful. I said Absolutely it too, wonderful. I said it too. He said, it won't be long now. Yeah. Blessings yeah. of blessings. It's one thing fast on the heels of the other. And I believe we're entering into that season. That's why I've been praying every day because I'm like, Lord, whatever it takes to accelerate it, I want to be, I want to, I want to do it. Prayer, worship, declaration, all of that will bring us into that place where God's just going to pour out blessing. Wonderful. I feel a song. I feel a song coming on, Martha. I feel Glorious. a song coming on. Glorious, I'm going to win. Glorious, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm gonna, oh, I love it. I love, I wish I was on the stage grooving down with you guys, man. You said, you look like you had so much fun. <laughs>
You watch, that's going to happen. <laughs> Wonderful, lovely. Well, listen, Amos 9, 13 to 15, God is in control. God is bringing us through and we are going to win. Get your copy of Glorious, I'm Going to Win by Martha Munizzi. God bless you, Martha. Thank God bless you. your family, Epic Life Church. And uh, we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care now. Thank you. C and M, linking us together. C and M, for your international media. Shh.